What's up, everybody? This is the Burn Pit Podcast. I am your host, Scott Benjamin Sieverts. We are filmed, edited, produced here at Studio Me in Pittsburgh, PA. You can find us on Spreely. Spreely is your free speech platform. It stands for Speak Freely. You can download Spreely on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick. You can also go to your smart uh, device, your phone, Android. You can download the Freedom Hub app. It is absolutely free. It costs you nothing and it supports the podcast. There's a lot of good stuff you can find on there. A lot of great podcasters, a lot of documentaries. So download the Freedom Hub app on your phone. Um, with us today, in studio, sitting across the table from me, is a Pittsburgh legend. Uh, he is in the Pennsylvania Boxing Hall of Fame. He's in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. He is the Pittsburgh kid, Paul Spatafora. How are you, sir? Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is awesome. This is uh, an, an honor for me. Uh, it's so nice to have you in studio. Um, uh, typical flow of the show is we allow the guest to give a, a brief bio background, whatever you'd like to say about yourself, just introducing yourself to a listening view, viewing audience, people that are going to see this, hear it, watch it, because we're also on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble. Uh, we just moved to iTunes as well. So anything you'd like to say about yourself, please do. I'm, I'm all right. You know, I'm doing good this <laughs> Here, I'm, down, I'm in Pittsburgh helping the kids with boxing down at the 412 gym. <clears throat> They're getting ready to go to a couple of kids going to the Olympic trials, you know, and just trying to be a part of it, you know what I mean? That's that's a good thing you're doing. I, I came down to uh, 412 boxing uh, yesterday, and I saw you working, and, and we were just talking off uh, camera. <laughs> you're in shape, man. 48 years old, man. You're looking really good. You never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe get an exhibition. I'm ready to get it. <laughs> I, do, I mean, you look in great shape. The holding pads are moving around. Your footwork still looks in, incredible. You're grabbing weights. You're, I mean, you look great. You look great. But you got a, uh, you have a, a, a book I, out now, a biography. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paul Spatafora Fighting Till the End. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. You can also go to uh, Paul Spatafora's Instagram page. Uh, it's Paul Spatafora Official. Go to his Shopify. It's on there. What I want to uh, start with is just getting a little background story. I want people to buy the book. I want people to read the book. I had uh, uh, our your aunt was just in here, yeah, and, and uh, she's a, a good friend of, of my family as well. Uh, my mother in law and and her have been best friends for years. Jeannie Handler will give them a shout, a shout out. Aunt Jack, they're good people. Um, but uh, m- my mother in law's sister bought the book, and she said she couldn't put it down. It was uh, amazing. Uh, but uh, I, I'd like to get a little background real quick and, and build up to getting into the story a little bit. Um, how how young were you when you laced up uh, gloves for the first time? When I first started boxing, I was um, 14. 14? Yeah. I was in the, what, what happened was I went to the, um, I went down PK's gym, down to Hogan's gym. I first uh, first went down there. And my brother was a southpaw, Harry was a left hand, and he be, he brought me down, him and Head brought me down to the, to the gym. And uh, the one guy was in there coaching. I'm not gonna mention his name. He he uh, he. I was I I wasn't left handed. I just my I wanted to be left handed because my brother was. So he was telling me to do this left hand. I said, No, I'm left handed. So I'm staying left handed. He he kicked me. He said, You gotta then you have to leave the gym. So I went up to the Hill District, up up by uh, Jack's gym. Had I, I immediately went there. I trained for like three weeks. Had my first fight. I met PK at the fight. I told PK I wanted to come to his gym, but he told me I had to leave. It was an amateur fight at fourteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my first fight. I, I was training for like three weeks, and then I just, once I started fighting, I just never stopped. It was kind of like a, a, a very addictive boxing. It was very. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. Like. It was different than basketball. Football. You didn't have to have grades, good grades to, to be in, be at the gym. You have to, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because I was having trouble in school, getting suspended. Bye, bye, bye. You know what I'm saying? One of them type of situations. And I just, I just hugged the gym. I just loved it. I fell in love with it. I just fell in love with it. I mean, that's, that's yeah. all I could. Well, I can see it still. Yeah, at I 48 love years it. old, the passion that you had yesterday, watching and and what you what you're doing now, giving back to the younger kids. And yeah. training them is something that's so unbelievable. And it's so fun too because you know you put you put your work in this. You you 
you put your work and your time into something you love to do, and to see somebody do it and do well doing it, it, it it's different. It feel, it's different. There's some fulfillment there you get. It's just different. Like, you know, like for me, like when I was fighting, I'll be like, I'll, fighting is just fighting. You know what I'm saying? I love fighting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. I love, I love it. Once it's on, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like to scrap. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like that. I mean, you can see it still in in what you're doing yesterday, you could still see that passion. I mean, uh, it was amazing seeing your work yesterday. It's good to be in that type of environment too. You know what I'm saying? I want, well, I'm, out, I'm in Las Vegas right now. I got yeah. married. Me and my me and my girl got back together. Years. Good woman, right there. Yeah, yep. the best. You know yep. what I mean? And we got back together. But there's so many, so many uh, situations like from what happened and all the way to the parole people. Then the then the you know, I couldn't be around her, and then me, sne- me, me sneaking. You can't be around your girl that you love. You're not okay. You're not okay. I messed up. I did that. I know I did that. I know. I know what happened. Sure. Okay, but now I can't. Now I gotta go to. So if I go see her, I go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just, it just, it just destroyed my boxing career. Yeah. But it's, it's, it is what it is. So at your first, uh, first amateur fight at 14. Uh, how many? How many? Amateur fights typically. Now, this is just me getting some uh, knowledge out there for people that aren't aware that watch us, don't really understand like the boxing game. Typically, how many amateur fights would you have before you turn pro? Um, is it different? Is it different yeah, for everybody? It, it, it's different, but I, me personally, I, I think you should have as as many as you can. You know what I mean? Now, when you were coming up, and you're talking about the '90s. About, yeah, I probably had about a hundred amateur fights. Yeah, I, I'm looking at some of your bios on different places. I'm Fourteen, so you got to remember, 14, 15. I got shot when I was sixteen, so seventeen and eighteen. I turned pro when I was nineteen. Pro, turned pro, and at 19. I had ninety amateur fights. Wow! So I just stayed busy. Yeah. I fought a lot. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. in, and in the pros, and I'm in the same way, when is the pros? You know what I mean? PK had me busy. I fought a lot. Who decides when you turn pro? Do you make that decision, or does your coach? No, my coach made. I mean, I like that. Just think about something. This is what I want to tell all all boxers. So just think about this. Imagine. I, I love basketball. I like playing basketball. I can still hoop a little bit. I you bet. know what I mean? But I, bet you're I, great can't. I saw I you. Good shape. But I'm telling you, I can't. I guarantee you, I can't walk on and play in the um, NBA. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you can't just people. Say, oh, I'm boxing. I'm boxing. I'm just gonna turn pro. No, it ain't like that. You need to have the experience. You need to. You need to have the. Just the, everything, the, the, the going to the national. Fighting in front of a crowd. Yeah, the, 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 the whole of, thing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You just, it, it's just, it ain't, it ain't. I, you have to have experience to turn pro. I, I mean, if to be a good pro. Right, you got to get the amateur, you, you got to get the amateurs in there. And I try to tell my son, like my son, like my son, he wants to turn pro. But how how old is your son? He's not, he's 18. Gino. Yeah. He's a stud. He'll be 19 in a week. But he has to fight as an amateur. You got to have amateur fights. You got to. You have to be involved in. But you just. Why would I turn you pro? You ain't fighting. Because once you turn pro, there's no going back. There ain't no going back. Yeah, and then yeah. you're in the pro. Come on, you got to be ready to be in them, in them situations. Right. All these tournaments. You need to be in all them tournaments. Uh, your son, how many uh, amateur fights does he have? Probably right. like nine. Okay, so that's he's not enough. Put in more yeah, work he got to he gotta work. You should listen to his dad there. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, he, I'm not going to turn a pro. That's good. Now, now, are you his coach? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're uh, the forward on your book. Uh, I'm going to read some things from your book because I thought there was some really good stuff there. But the forward on your book is a gentleman by the name of Tom Yankello. Is yeah. that how you pronounce his name? That yeah. was your coach. Yeah. What kind of relationship did you have there with him? Now, was he Great. your coach from the beginning? I mean, PK was my trainer from PK Pacora, and then yeah. when PK passed away, I went with um Tommy. Tom. And Tommy was sort of like with me while PK was around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. PK was having trouble talking and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he would let me go with Tommy because he trusted Tommy, and then Tommy was Tommy's just a great trainer. I'm gonna he re- might be he might be the best trainer in the world right now. That's awesome. I'm just being honest. And, he's, with you. and, and the relationship. Outside of boxing, uh, he's. If I would have listened to Tommy, I'd probably be a multi-millionaire. I'm going to read a quote from the forward, if you don't mind, of, of your book, the biography. This is what uh, he said: Paul was one of the best, and without the drugs and alcohol, he would have been unstoppable. And that's from Tom Ankello. Um, uh, now, again, 
I, I don't want to get too into detail on, on much of uh, your background because I want people to pick this book up. Again, you can find this book on Amazon and, and go go to Paul Spatafora Official on his Shopify. You can buy that. In fact, there's a, a, a copy on there. You can get a signed copy. Uh, it's personalized, and uh, we want you to go and buy that. But um, when, when he says a quote about the, the alcohol and drug use, do you remember at what age you were drinking or using? Ever since I can remember. Yeah? Yeah. Was there a, a drink or drug of choice? Drink. Drinking? Yeah. Okay. Was there any like specific, were you a whiskey guy, bourbon, uh, no, anything? Just no, vodka? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, were you drinking? But I would, like, like see, I was, a, a, how could I? So when I stayed, when I was when I was boxing, I wasn't drinking. Okay. So when I was boxing, I wasn't drinking. So when you're training for a fight, I wasn't drinking. You weren't drinking. No, nah, but as soon as the fight would go, as soon as I'm talking about, as soon as the fight's over. Yeah. Everybody's worrying about. I'm, I'm worrying about get to the bar, get to the the after the, party. Yeah, that's the only thing I would be thinking about. You know what I'm saying? And a high pro, a profile gentleman like yourself. And probably then, had uh, after party set up. Yeah, or, and then, and, and well, well, that see when whenever I I'm talking about um, we're talking about when I was little, young, fourteen, fifteen. I'm ta- you were so, drinking that, yeah, that age, yeah, just like that. Yeah. But here's what here's what happened. See when I when I fought for the title and I got and I um and I won the title. Now 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 I have money. Never had no money. Right. In the see in the if you don't have money, you ha- if obviously. Obviously, you have to fight to make money because I have to fight to get money. How else am I also going to get money? Right. I, I, that's the only way I know right. how to get money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. And uh, now you win a title. You got some money. You did. And now the and now the and now the uh, the the binges because that's what they was. They was binges. Now they're going on for instead of having. A two-day binge, you might have like a month or two binge. Maybe. How often would you fight uh, when you, you won the title? How often would it you was, fight? It was sometimes. I, I was busy too. Twice so a year? I, I'd fight twice a year and I'd have a non-title fight just to keep me busy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just to stay busy. They tried to keep me busy. My managers tried to do every. They did. They, my managers did any everything and everything to help me. Did they know you had an issue? Yes, they did. Okay. They helped me more than anything in the world. Yeah. The baby was the best. Yeah. I'm talking, listen, I'm, my managers were the best. I'm 40, I'm 49, what, 49, one on one. Come on, man. It's a heck of a, I'm I, I mean, I mean, it's just a record. It's a, That's just a record. You know what I'm saying? But that just goes to show you what kind of managers they was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just. Uh, the people that may not, uh, in the introduction here, you're, you're from, uh, McKee's Rocks. Yeah. Now, people that don't know, uh, McKee's Rocks is a very blue collar, tough part of the Pittsburgh area. Uh, there's a those, those people are good people. You know that, that's my family too. There, um, they're strong people. There's a good sense of loyalty to these people in McKee's Rocks, uh, and they're fighters. And you're, I mean, you're a fighter. I mean, in and in and out of the ring, you're a guy that is loyal, has a lot of pride. I love the background of McKee's Rocks people, so I just wanted to put that out there, just to throw that out there. But um, when <clears throat> I'm I'm looking through, uh, you know, your biography here, uh, and I'm as a fan because I, I told you this off air. My dad took me to see you fight Desi Ford in, in, in 1998 in uh, Monroeville, and you won in the tenth round by TKO. Uh, you're just a t- uh, you just. Amazing to see box and amazing to see live, and just what a talented guy. I, I, I'm not going to say work because you still are. Seeing you in the ring yesterday, and the passion you have for the sport, and and, and the, the footwork that you still have, the fitness level that you still have. My God, you're still a, a fit guy in shape. Um, I guess what I the question I have is, um, at what point? Some people in, in addiction reach a breaking point or there's a catalyst, a moment that they go, something's got to change here. Uh, is is there one instance where you said, I, I need some help here? Or did somebody pull you aside and say, hey? I mean, my, honestly, honestly my, my wife came came back f- from uh, Las Vegas. I was doing terrible in Pittsburgh. A year and a half ago, two years ago, I was doing bad, bad, like bad, like it was bad. 
I feel like um, it was almost damn near like suicide. Like I was trying to kill myself type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, because it was just like, it just was, I don't know. I just couldn't find myself. I couldn't do nothing right. I couldn't like, you know what I'm saying? I was, I, I mean, I, I worked, I worked, I, I was working in the tree service. You know what I'm saying? And it was just. How long like, ago was this? Was a few years ago? Yeah. I was there for like six years at the um, Hoffman's tree service, but, uh, it was just different, man. Not boxing, not you know what I'm saying. You were involved in all with boxing, not. I was, yeah, I was going down. Training, yeah, I was still up. training, but, but it, it was, it just was, it was just so easy to, pick, grab something. You know what I mean? I couldn't stay away from grabbing something. Like and the then, bar drinking. And it. then, and then it went, then it went from drinking to doing drugs. Okay. You know what I mean? Was there a particular drug it, of choice that you I liked? Didn't, I don't care. I'm a really? garbage man. Like I didn't care about. Like that's just how it is. I, I'm with whatever type, you know what I'm saying, and it got and it got terrible. It got it got terrible. Yeah. I mean, terrible. Od terrible. Like yeah, Od four times. Really? Yeah. So it's this just, was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like since I've been retired, I Od four times. You retired in 2014. Yeah. So it's like, you know, every day I just you just got to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. It's so see out in Las Vegas. Boxing is all the time. There's a lot of boxing out there. Mm -hmm. I moved out the. I moved out there. I put a gym right in my house, and that's just what I do. That's good. You're staying you know? busy. Staying busy. Staying, staying busy. at the gym. I'm staying. Going to DLX. I'm going to see Jesse. I'm. I'm staying active. You know what I mean. Good for you. So I'm proud of you. That's yeah, awesome. Thank you, man. Heck yeah, good shit. All right. Now, uh, again, there's details in the book that uh, people are going to read. And I, I don't know if you want to go further and deep and discuss certain things, but I, I looked back and I found an interview from uh, WTA and I just want to maybe uh, you touch on this at this point in time uh, and just get your take on this. So this was in 2011. You were getting interviewed uh, with uh, the Boilermakers Union. Yeah. And you mentioned a, a gentleman by the name of Mike Mullins and Ray Ventrone. Yeah. That great, they reached great, out, great, great person to save to save, save you there. Yeah, he I, saved my life. Ray saved my life. Ray saved my life. I tell you, when you talk just now, and even in that interview, uh, there's like a, a very heartwarming, uh, sincere feeling that I get from you. Well, about those gentlemen, those guys that that it, it's it's it seems, Paul, that you have a lot of people around you. They really love you. They do. And they want what's best for you. You're a special guy. And there's so many people out there that look at you and think what a great career he had. And not only that, uh, and we'll get to something uh, in a little bit. And I think there's opportunity there for you to still get out there. And we want, I, I want what you and what your wife wants for you in an exhibition fight with a certain individual. And we're going to touch on this real quick <laughs> in the end. I want that. I want that. Not. I mean, I, I watch, I'm watching videos of you yesterday just prepping for this. And I thought to myself, I saw a clip that went kind of viral of you talking to Senior yeah. and wanting that. And I want it for you. We'll get to that in a sec. But real, real quick, we started the podcast off, and you mentioned 412 Boxing. I, I, I do want to touch what you're doing here because what you're doing here is a really good thing. It's underprivileged youth, and these, these young uh, men and women have opportunity here. They're going to the Olympic trials, and the Olympic trials uh, are December 1st to the 9th. And w you were working with yesterday a gentleman by the name of Sonny Taylor. And he's, he's a southpaw, too. Yeah, 165, 170-pounder. He looks good. Yeah, he's tough. We worked this morning, too. Did you? Yeah. Uh, you're doing this out he of got a, He's got a, he, he got, he, I think he's in the Air Force, a full yeah, thing Air in the Force, Air yeah. Force, right? And um, giving him a chance to make the, he got a chance to make the Olympics. You're doing this out of the goodness of your heart here. You're coming yeah, in, yeah. you're working with these yeah. kids, and the coach. Uh, they would do it for me. People, uh, people. They would do I've, it for me. I bet you they would do it for me. That's an amazing attitude. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, and, and James Hoy, I met him. Yeah, good dude, man. He's the funniest. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. He he's looked, eating him in the gym. And he's, <laughs> when you're, when you're uh, holding Matt pads and mitts, he's out in the end just talking. And it was, it was, uh, I was only there for like 15 minutes, but my God. Oh, man. Hey, what, we have fun there. I have fun there. It's so much fun. The environment's great. Yeah. It's so much fun. 
There's a young lady, too. we got to give her a shout-out. I saw her yesterday as well. Her name's Trinity Burke. Yeah. She's got an opportunity there, too. Yeah. The, and I knew Trinity for a long time. Trinity, how old I, is she? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly how They're old both Trinity. young. They're both yeah, young. They're, young. they're both they're young. young. But and I knew Trinity a long time because I used to be. I used to live up in Dubois. I moved in Dubois when I, whenever I when I was done boxing. I moved up there. I used to work with this kid, Nico. And then I would see Trinity. She used to go to Joe Hellman's gym. Okay. From up there, you know what I mean. So, and she come, and then she just came to four one two and just got way better. They're got both super here. talented. See everybody, they're working hard and, and yeah. uh, really talented people, really gifted. And it's kind of like a it's old school type of environment. It's that gritty, rocky. You know, it's yeah. you go down the stairs, and it's like just the room, mm-hmm. and it's people grinding and working towards something. So I, I hope that they do well. Shout out to, to them. And, and uh, there's an open invitation for <clears throat> Mr. Hoy or Sonny or Trinity. If they would like to come on the podcast, uh, here's an open invitation for you watching this. Um, I have uh, Mr. Hoy's number. I don't even think that, like, like how could you say anything? Like, they already won. Like, that's winning. They was winning. They made the come on. Olympic trials, yeah. that's huge. That's huge. You, you don't that, – who do, who gets there? Who does it? Who makes the Olympic team? Very small percentage of people. Come on. Very small percentage. So just the one percent of the one percent. Yeah, just enjoy what you're doing right now and just learn. You're just gonna get better. Everything you're doing, it's gonna learn. It's all gonna be a learning experience for everybody. Is that the advice you give them? Yeah, it's yeah. for everybody too. It's for the, it's for coach. It's for me. It's for Trinity. It's for Sonny. Just experience. It's just a learning experience. You just get better. It's just mm-hmm. gonna get better. Everything just gets better. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, your story is something unique. And I, again, I, I'm going to uh, implore people to go out and purchase this book. Uh, again, on Amazon, you can go to uh, Paul Spadafore's Instagram page. You'll find it, the Sp- uh, Paul Spadafore official. Go to Shopify. Uh, you'll see this book on there. And uh, his story is just something special. It, it is something special. And, and uh, people make mistakes in life, but you fought back that's the, st- the story is you fighting just fighting back from uh everything and that's the title the title of the book is fight till the end it's yeah and it's, it's not over yet it's not <laughs> right well I, I have some uh boxing questions just to ask this because i want to pick your brain but i want to touch on this so years ago um I, I my dad's a fan of yours and uh you know when i i got a message from uh I believe your manager, your wife, she runs all the social media side of things, the business side of things. She's yeah. she's really nice. Um, so shout out to her, Nadine. Yeah. Um, uh, she reached out to me, and I thought, and and by the way, I, I didn't even know the connection to Aunt Jack. I had no clue. Yeah. So when I I showed my wife, I said, Paul Spatter four, uh, Paul Spatter four messaged me, and she goes. That's and, and, I'm like, no. It's, 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 so the connection there is what a small world is. But I, I reached out to uh, my dad, who's a big fan of you, and my 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 dad and a buddy of mine is. Uh, he goes, you gotta you gotta ask him about the Mayweather sparring exhibition session. You got to. So I I, I have to ask. I have to ask. So what what year was this? How did it all came to be? How did it get set up with you and Floyd it Mayweather? Was, it was just a sparring session. Like it was just like. Um, Where were you at at the time? I was in our Richard Steele's gym. Here, where was it? In Las Vegas. Las Vegas, okay. Yeah, I was in Richard Steele's gym, and I was sporting a lot of um, Mr. Mayweather's. uh, Floyd Sr.? Yeah, I was sporting a lot of his fighters. I love this. And I was was having my way with them, you know what I'm saying? Just doing good. I was doing well with them. I was in my prime. What year was this? In in 2000. Okay. So I'm young. I'm 23 years old. I can... Listen, bro, I could fight. I saw him. <laughs> so I witnessed it firsthand. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I don't, like, oh, I know you're Mayweather, and I know you, he he's great. I know he's, I mean, think he's a, he's the best, right? So we they just, it, I was ready to fight. He wasn't ready to fight, and it was just. Okay, so I you guess, were training and prepared yeah, to fight. And, and, and he just came to the gym, and we sparred, just like that. How, how you many know, rounds? Many times, but you have to remember this. You know how many times I've been sparring? Somebody, somebody would just come and get out on you, dude. That's all it was. Just a, a bad day. People get the best of each other yeah, sometimes. Yeah, just, just a sparring session. Right. It ain't a fight. Right. 
But, but it's out there. I mean, yeah. when you look at the, and you can find it on YouTube. All you got to do is, is search. And you know what, Paul though? It makes me a little bit salty because, like, like people look, like, I don't, like, uh, how can I put it? Like, uh, uh, I'm known for a sparring Mayweather. Like, come on, man. That's I'm, not what I'm, I know you I'm for. I'm a fighter. You're one, you're, of the, you're one of the best to ever do it in my opinion I'm, I, I, I'm, you're 49 I'm, one and one you're 49 one and one you're in the pittsburgh boxing hall of fame you're in the international boxing hall of fame you're one of the you're one of the best to do it in my opinion and when you read well i'll tell the, you what i could tell you this i could tell you this i, I have never i don't i haven't ever been in the ring inside a ring with another human being that I felt any type of way, like, damn, I need to stay away from this dude. Right. Like, nah, nah. Like you weren't his equal or weren't like, a better yeah, than him, like, right? There's nah, nobody you felt inferior no, to. My IQ is, my boxing IQ is crazy. Yeah. You were born to do this. Yeah, I love it. You were it. made to do this. I love it. And you're still passionate about it. I see it. I saw it yesterday. I, I you know, so the uh, the forward, too, was obviously Tommy and Keller, but also I have to bring this up is Roy Jones Jr. as a friend of yours. Yeah. I mean... Now there you go. Talk now. There, now that's what you call a different individual. Like that's I. He's have a legend keep, too. He's a real legend. He's a real. So are you, sir? Nah, he's a real one. That's the. You know what I mean? He's just a different type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> you ever spar him? At all? No. no? <laughs> hey, but you. He's just so game, and he's a rumbler, and he's uh, just a beast. He's a le he's a real. That's a yeah, legend. He's legend. a legend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've watched, arguably, I watched him too for years, arguably you could say he's the best ever, ever boxer. You could say that. And who? And really, yeah, yeah pretty much. You know what I mean? I, I sometimes I watch his fight with James Tony. Just sometimes I, I like the, his fight with James Tony. Anyways, uh, all right. So I'm going to read a uh, forward that he did. So the, the the forward was done by again Tom Yankello and then Roy Jones Jr. Uh, this is a quote from Roy Jones Jr. The way I looked at it was Paulie had to be pretty damn awesome to do the stuff he did in the ring and remain undefeated for so long with all of those issues. The man had all kinds of things going on outside of the ring that should have stood in his way, but he still kept winning. God had to be watching out for him. That was from uh, Roy Jones Jr. Um, pretty incredible that uh, you have these guys. Uh, you, you, you garn Your name garners a lot of respect, especially here in the city of Pittsburgh, but in boxing in general. Um, the, uh, I'm t it I'm seems like when, like Las Vegas, there's, that's where boxing is. Oh, of course, yeah. And, it seems and fighting. Like I mean, you get look boxing UFC. You a know, lot of people yeah. know bo they the people that know boxing. The real people that know boxing, like you know, like Rockman, like Hasim Rockman. Right. He's, yeah. he's like a real boxer. Like he knocked out Lennox Lewis. Yeah. You know? He yeah. knocked Lennox Lewis. Don't knock him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? But other fighters, yeah. it seems like like they like they know me. It seems that it's it's they it's a easier like it's just more like like I belong there like I belong yeah. to be in that type of absolutely uh, and, and on the so as a fighter talented uh, yeah, unbelievable career forty nine one on one but now as I see as a coach talents there too your your ability to be able to to work with these these kids is absolutely amazing. And, and you can see it on, you know, you go to his YouTube, your YouTube page, you go to uh, Instagram, and you, you go to 412 Boxing Instagram, you see the work that, that Paul is putting in with these kids. He's really, really good with these kids. So I, I also would advise people to start following 412 Boxing. Follow uh, Paul Spadafora on Instagram, please. Uh, now, these questions are purely selfish for me because I just want to uh, uh, get this. Uh, when you look at your career, 51 fights, is there one that stands out to you Two questions. One that stands out to you say, that was my best performance. My best performance probably, I, I, it's either against Cardona or late in my career when I fought this guy from um, Italy. It was a regular fight, regular guy, but I had a really good night that night. But the Sosa fight really, really like, it just, it just, dude, I think it defined, defined, defined your career. Who I was. Yeah. I mean, like I was, I got knocked out. I was knocked out. Like it could have been stopped. That could have been a. And you got up. I got up. Yep. And then it, I, but you got to remember, I got, I got knocked out in the third round. I was knocked out for like six, seven rounds. But I was fighting just on pure gut yeah. and go. You know what I mean? Everything was just what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're almost on autopilot. Just yeah. 
being like, like the, it, but it tells the truth. And when you're hurt, when got you're, a chin on yeah, you. I mean, but listen, when you get hurt, that, that'll tell the truth. Who, what type of dude you are, what kind of person, what you're made of. Yeah, what you're really about. Like you ever see people to get in trouble? They get in trouble next thing you know. They, 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 they want to quit. This. They do that. Yeah. yeah, he did it. No, he did it. He did they it. They point the finger. What you mean? Snitch. You, know, you wasn't. You wasn't saying that when you got all that money in your pocket. Boss, you, what are you talking about him for? You know what I'm saying? Same thing in boxing. You get knocked down, you're on the ground. No one can get you up but you. You ain't, no one can help you. They're, this guy's, he's, you're, you're talking about an Olympic, Olympian who's, who's, who's trained to come and get you. He's coming at you at 100, 100, 100 miles an hour. You're either going to. I, I don't. I think it's how much you can take. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And keep yeah. going. Yeah. There's there's plenty of uh, a ways out, right? You can find a way out of yeah. a fight easy. Yeah. See, that's the thing about me. I I could take a really good one. Now, there's some. <laughs> I feel like there's there's guys in the sport I talk to with boxing UFC. And you, uh, you know, my sister in law is dating a UFC fighter right now, and there are uh, there are guys. It's a sickness. That, there's guys that don't mind being hit. Like, there's guys that don't mind being hit. Like, they almost enjoy it. <laughs> I feel like you're that guy. Oh, no, <laughs> You know, it's like, oh. It's, you, so, it, I don't like getting hit. No, okay. I don't right. like getting hit. All right. You like being the hammer and not the nail. That's. I mean, but there are guys out there that are sick and or, that get hit and they're like, come on. You're One, we yeah. Jesus, All right. man. Here's another question. Wow. For, again, this is purely so. I got some, I, dude, I can stay here with you all day, but I know you're a busy man. I don't want to keep you too long, and I want to plug the book again, and then I want to plug the uh, exhibition match that I really want to see you do, and I want to see you make a ton of money, and I want to see you whoop on this guy. So uh, the other one, is there anybody you look at in those 51 fights, 49 one and one is there anybody you look at and go, that was my toughest test, or he was a tough one. He, that guy pushed my limits. That guy tested me, and I'm better for it. I think Sosa. Yep. I think Sosa. Yeah. Okay. Sosa. I was I was hurt a couple times in my career. I was hurt when Sosa hurt. Sosa had me hurt. I got hurt by this dude Dennis Holback. He caught me slipping. I got I got caught caught a couple times. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think the Sosa one is just basically the one that defines me the most. Okay. You're you know when you look at your story, it's all about uh, going through adversity and not letting it define you and just keep going. And getting up, even in the ring, you get hit. There's ways out. There's ways to quit. There's yeah. ways to say I'm done, but you just keep going. And even that's in, not just even in, in life. In, in life. life, that's in you. Life. Yeah, I love it, man. All right, uh, another one, and then I'm gonna uh, plug the book again, and then uh, we'll get you out of here because I know you're a busy person. And, and uh, God bless your your wife. She's been awesome, and and the people at the gym were were kind and friendly. Uh, you guys have been great. Um, you just mentioned you think Roy Jones Jr. You could argue is one of the best of all time. Yeah. Across any weight classes, give me top five boxers of all time, if you don't mind, or if you want to stick to a weight class, you can. But, and then I, I'm going to actually, uh, uh, give me top so five. You, you can take a minute to think about it, and you can have some honorable mentions, or you can just throw out as many names as you want, and they don't have to be in any particular order. But while you're thinking about it, I'm going to give you a hot take from, from me, from my perspective in the heavyweight division, all right, of all time. And and you, I get your take here. You can argue this if you want to. Um, I look back as a boxing fan, going and watching the heavyweights throughout the years, and I thought to myself, you can make an argument today that Tyson Fury is maybe the best heavyweight of all time. And the reason why I say this, and you can rebut and shoot me down, and I'll honor your word. Uh, you see Tyson. When Tyson fought Holyfield, there were some rumors there that Tyson's team kind of steered away Tyson from fighting Holyfield, that Holyfield was a, just a, a more technical boxer. He's a guy that could take a punch, and he was a, a big guy. And when they fought, you know, Holyfield was got, was the better guy, you know, on those nights. But then you look at a guy like Lennox Lewis. Uh, you know, Holyfield goes and fights Lennox Lewis, and Lennox Lewis gets the better of him. But then Lennox Lewis goes and fights Klitschko. Klitschko beats Lewis. But then who beats Klitschko? Tyson Fury beats Klitschko. So I know that the, the boxing math sometimes doesn't add up that way. Just because one guy beats this guy doesn't mean that this guy can beat that guy. No, it's Styles makes fights. Styles, Styles makes fights. fights. But I think there's an argument there for Fury after beating Wilder and after getting up like I he think, did. I think um, he might be the best heavyweight of all time. You're, I'll let you have the floor here. See, see, 
the last performance that he fought, the guy that um, UFC N- guy. Nagano. Yeah. Ex- exhibition. And or was that, was that a sanction fight? I mean, was it was a fight. Fight, yeah. So, that's right. Nagano's own one now, right? It was a fight. I mean, yeah. it was a fight. Yeah. And it was a fight that, like... You're making the right argument here, sir. <laughs> You're making the right it's, argument it's here, ki- sir. It's kind of hard to say he's the best heavyweight ever right. fight. That guy was one. That guy had no fights, no bo- no pro zero. boxing. He yeah, fought right. the world heavyweight world champion. And, and listen, you changed my mind. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Like I'm gonna. T- I, I I couldn't watch. I couldn't really watch the whole fight. I was getting disgusted. I couldn't believe it. Think about when Mayweather fought Conor McGregor. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Was a, it wasn't no fight. No, More, that was he kind of no just fight. played with him for a little bit, and then that when was, he wanted to, yeah. it was no fight. Like that wasn't. He literally walked him down, and that was it. Yeah, couldn't do that. With Nah, that yeah. was a good, that was like a real fight. He yeah. had him down and everything. Well, he knocked him down. Yeah, kudos to that. I argument. would be like, I would be, I would, I would argue to say that just because it. I mean, you can give Tyson Fury won the fight, but. Just on the fact that he did it the way the way that guy did the, the fight like that, I would have gave him a fight. I would have gave him a fight. That would have been me. Even though, even though, yeah, I would have gave him a good fight. Good conversation, good talk right there. I like. I, I, lo- I, lo- I, I think Roberto Duran is probably one of the best ever. He's my favorite ever. Best for, best for James Tony, Roy Love Jones, James. Roy Jones. You know what I mean, Mike Tyson. You know what I mean, Paul Spadafore, Salvador Sanchez. Pernell Whitaker. A, <laughs> can't go wrong with any of those Julio names. Caesar Chavez. You, you, There's so many great fighters out yeah, there. Yeah, can't go wrong with any of those names. And listen, now we got the we have a, the young, the up and coming, the, up, the the younger generation, yeah. like the ones now, like Tank Davis. What do you think about a, a kid like he's, Ryan Garcia? What do you think about him? Like him or no? Just, I'm really not too much of a big fan of Ryan. Okay. You know what I mean? No, we're not besmirching his name. We're not saying anything. That we're just saying. Yeah, hey, I'm not. Is, not right. like like I just I I just think that the, like I don't know like um uh I just think there's better fighters out there. Gotcha. Good you answer. I mean? Great Tank, response. Like Tank yeah. Davis. Yep. They got this. What well, Adrian Broner? You they like got him? Adrian Broner's like monster. He's a stud. He's a That's monster. A stud. It's a great conversation. Adrian God, Broner's a monster. Yeah. He fought Pacquiao. I first said, "Well, Pacquiao." He yeah. Went, Pacquiao really didn't hit him. Yeah. It wasn't no, like, you right. know what I'm saying? There's a lot of good fighters out here right now. Oh, yeah. Boxing is yeah. coming back around. It's, yep. it's good. It is good. All right. Uh, again, Paul Spadafora. How about Terrence Crawford? It's, absolutely. I mean. Uh, right. Uh, you know, I mean, he may be the best ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fair. You can make an argument he's, for those you guys. You can, yes. definitely. Like, he's a monster. You see what he did? Yeah, I couldn't believe what he did to Spence. I was yeah. like, I couldn't believe it. But he did it. He did that. He's he 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 went all he he's he's about to go up and get Canelo. You're still a student of the game here, even after I all, think that 51 that, fights. I th- you're watching everything, and you're unbelievable. Man. I I honestly think I don't like. I think that the um because that's a great fight for uh, Canelo and Crawford. Yeah. You know, it's a major fight, and and Crawford. If anybody deserves the get the money like that, yeah. he does. He does. You know who else deserves money? You do. And I'm going to plug this real quick. Right? <laughs> so uh, it's an infamous, uh, that's not what you're known for. And I agree with you. And I don't want that to be the thing, right? Because you're 49 1 1, you're in the Hall of Fame, uh, uh, Pennsylvania Boxing Hall of Fame, the International Boxing Hall of Fame. <clears throat> uh, you recently, uh, there's a, a little clip that went viral on YouTube. Uh, I'll probably uh, send this to the producer to put it in the podcast just so people understand what I'm talking about. You're s- talking to uh, Floyd Sr. And you're just saying, hey, let me get an exhibition with yeah. the guy. If Floyd's going over to Japan and doing exhibitions with this guy and he's doing the Conor McGregor thing. And why he's doing, wouldn't it make sense to do it with me? Like, Why wouldn't it make sense to do it with you? To me, that don't make sense for him not to do it. Like, I right. think that... Let's do think, it. Let's I get that done. I think that would be a good thing. Uh, Let's get I that done. I think that'd be interesting. Absolutely. I mean... We'll, we'll, we'll make a clip here and we'll, 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 we'll get it out there. And, we'll and it is it. what it is. Yeah. I mean, to, it would be fun. It would be awesome. It would yeah, be awesome. Give me a good beat. Let's I need, go. I need a beat. Like See, there's that. the sickness there. <laughs> <laughs> there's the, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, this this gentleman, he is the, the Pittsburgh kid. He's, a, he's not only a, a Pittsburgh legend. Your name uh, in Pittsburgh is it is legendary as a, just an amazing talent. And 
uh, you fight till the end. And his biography is out now. Please go pick it up. You can find it on Amazon. You can go to his Instagram page, Paul Spadafora Official. Go to his Shopify, purchase the book. You can get a, a personalized copy. Um, it's worth the read because his stories is so uh, amazing, and it is about resiliency. It is, it is about fighting and coming back from things. And just because you get knocked down, th- there's no quit in this guy. There's just no quit in this guy. Um, uh, you've been an absolute pleasure to have in studio. And uh, your, your lady's been uh, great to my family, and, and your extended family has been great with my family. And I just uh, have the utmost respect for this gentleman sitting across the table from me. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to add or plug, the floor is yours. Take whatever time you want. If you want to say anything, I always give the guests the last word, and then I sign out. So uh, anything you'd like to say? No, just thanks for um, thank you for having me. And um, I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to seeing how Sonny and Trinity are going to do for their, their uh, tournament. Their it's Olympic December drop. 1st uh, through the 9th. Yeah. That's awesome. You know. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and and uh, 412 Boxing, check 412 Boxing. What uh, you're doing down there is, is amazing. You're giving back. Go, you're giving I'm back. Go, I'm about to go tonight, later on tonight, to go mess with, I don't know if you know Teddy, Teddy McCondre. You ever heard? He's a up, he's up and coming pro. Na- name sounds familiar. He's a beast. Think, yeah. He's a truth. What, uh, what weight class are you looking at? 135, 140. Okay. He yeah he he does the right thing. It's gonna be hard for anybody to beat that kid. I mean, you know talent. You see yeah, talent. That kid you know can talent. fight for real. He's a beast. All right. Well, hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, again for watching us. You can find us on Spreely TV. Download the Freedom Hub app. This will be out on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Spreely, iTunes, uh, y- y- you name it. Um, Paul Spadafora. What a gentleman you are. What a legend you are. It was an honor. Yep. Thank you, man. man, man. Um, we're out of here. Thank you for taking the time to watch us. If you like this episode and you'd like to watch another one, click here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks.